Joining us now for more on today's top business stories is Ed Butovsky. He's a managing partner at Chapwood Investments. Good to have you on the show with us, Ed. Let's start off with Saudi Aramco, the IPO, the biggest ever. As we said, it's going to value the company at $1.7 trillion when trading begins. It's short of the $2 trillion target, but it still makes it the most valuable listed company in the world. What do you make of the valuation? Well, I'll tell you, it did come in. You know, it sounds unbelievable to most people that $1.7 trillion is below what expectations were. But expectations were about $2 trillion. And I will tell you, Michelle, I think a lot of it has to do with the tension in that region and some of the issues internally in Saudi Arabia. They did not get a lot of individual investors. And it was three times oversubscribed. But in the IPO world, that's not a huge number. Normally, a really hot offering is oversubscribed by 10, 20, 30 times. This was three times oversubscribed. They're doing it because the economy in Saudi Arabia is weak and oil prices are low and they need to get some funds into uh, that company. So uh, it's a little right. disappointing. And, and Ed, let's not forget there was that whole scandal with the crown prince accused of being involved in that uh, Khashoggi affair, that uh, columnist that reportedly the crown prince was involved in his uh, murder in, in, the, in Turkey. So that certainly has uh, made it a little problematic for him to shore up investor support. But, you know, his big plan, of course, has been to modernize the Saudi economy in a number of fronts. And he also wants to try and wean it off its dependence on oil. Do you think that he can still implement that ambitious plan? Well, it's it, it, look, a plan like that and what he's laid out is going to take a long time to occur. But coming up and raising $25.4 you know, billion, uh, that, that could help solve a lot of problems pretty quickly. And um, so I, I believe that you know, this is a first step and it's a necessary step because that whole you know, region needs to get some liquidity into it. And this is a first step. And towards modernization, I think everybody is supporting of that. All right, let's talk about oil. We have OPEC meeting in Vienna, and they're considering cutting production. And then on Friday, we have OPEC and its allies, OPEC Plus meeting. That, of course, includes Russia. They're meeting to finalize proposed cuts. What do you expect to come out of that? I, I do expect uh, these cuts. I mean, when they cut production, what that really means is we're doing what we can do, this, these countries, to raise oil prices. A lot of these economies are based on oil. And if the oil prices aren't high, they suffer. And a lot of countries, just like Saudi Arabia, they need oil prices to be somewhere close to $70 a barrel in order to really you know, do good things for their economy. They're, they're all priced there. Same thing with Norway, other countries up in uh, the northern part of Europe. So everybody wants oil prices higher. Us as consumers, we want oil prices lower. So I do fully expect uh, there to be cuts yeah and then artificially raise prices. All right, Ed, you and I have been discussing the U.S.-China trade talks for a while now. We have 10 days before those additional U.S. tariffs on Chinese goods kick in December 15th. Those levies would target an additional $156 billion worth of Chinese goods. The president said today that something could happen regarding those tariffs. Didn't give any details. He didn't say that they are discussing that yet. What are your expectations come December 15th? Uh, kick the can down the road. That's mm -hmm. all I expect. I, I will tell you that if I was the Chinese, I do not, I'm not going to try to do a lot because I don't know, you know, I personally don't believe the impeachment hearings are going to go anywhere, but we don't know if Trump's going to get reelected. And the Chinese have very long visions. You know, they have 100-year plans. So to hold on for another 200, 300 days to really not commit to anything, I wouldn't be surprised if the Chinese don't do that. And I, you know, from the other side of it, you know, Trump but believes, which I do as well, the U.S. economy is really strong. This is what we want to hit them. So, well, do you see the president, though, giving them a reprieve on uh, the tariffs that are supposed to uh, kick in December 15th? Or do you think he's also going to delay that move for a little while? I think he's going to give them a reprieve. I think... Uh, I just don't think anything's going to happen, Michelle. I've been saying this, you know, you and I have talked about it for a long time. I expect very little to come from this, from all of this. Uh, there might be, you know, something here or there, but it's going to be very minor. Nothing major is ever going to happen with these agreements. All right. Speaking of the U.S. economy, we had a disappointing private payroll number released on Wednesday. We've got uh, the official jobs report coming out on Friday. What do you expect to see there, Ed? Well, the expectations are 187,000. You know, anybody's guess, anybody who knows, you know, for certain doesn't know. But I, I, I will tell you that we need a lot of jobs. And the reason we need jobs in this country is because we need tax revenue. 
jobs, more jobs equal more tax revenue, and just look at our deficit. It's really a horrible situation. We need well over 400,000 jobs per month, well, many more than that. No one's going to argue with that, Ed. No one's going to argue that more jobs are always a good thing. All right, Ed, thank you so much as always, Ed Witowski.